Hey guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show. We give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today is John Campia. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. It's more than meets the eye. We got some Transformers <laughs> stuff to talk about today. Also, we're your host of Collider's Heroes, John Schnepp. So totally excited to talk about these first three subjects. I can barely contain myself. <laughs> also here, Jeremy Johns. I think it's exactly what meets the eye. I think what you see is what you get. <laughs> also here, Mark Ellis. In T-minus about one or two minutes, I'm going to be quoting the horse from Ren and Stimpy. Look out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so last night there was a bunch of us, including uh, Jeremy Johns, Mark <clears throat> Ellis, myself, a few other people here. We were sitting in the th in a uh, in a screening room on the Fox lot watching Why Him? We can't talk about it yet, but we were watching that, and about one minute before the movie starts, our little notifications on our phones go off. You remember, the movie hadn't started yet. We do turn our phones yeah, off yeah. before we're the not, thing. We're, we're not, we're not horrible like, here. Right? Oh, the Transformers trailer dropped, and we sat down and we watched it, so we got a bunch of Transformers to talk about today. What are we starting with? Paramount Pictures finally released their first trailer for Transformers The Last Night, the fifth film in the Transformers franchise. Directed by Michael Bay, the film expands the mythology of the Transformers universe by introducing a medieval backstory with Mark Wahlberg reprising his role from Transformers Age of Extinction. Transformers The Last Night opens in theaters on June 23, 2017. John, what do you think of the first trailer for Transformers The Last Night? Okay, it had to happen eventually. Uh, we talked about it on yesterday's show. There has never been a Transformers trailer, even though I d hated number two, and I hated number three, and I hated number four. Despite all of that, there has never been a Transformers trailer that I did not absolutely love. It happened last night. For the first time, it happened last night. Um, what can I say? I thought it was a snooze fest of a trailer. I really, I, I thought it was a completely boring trailer with like completely random shots that weren't revealing anything rather cool uh, that I didn't see. Here's the strangest thing about the trailer to me, all right? As a construct for a trailer, you hear Anthony Hopkins going, Optimus Prime has left us. Oh, okay. So part of this thing, and clearly it's Prime, we know the animated series storyline when uh, they bring him back. But So he's gone, part of this movie's gonna be about bringing him back, got it. Oh, no, you're just going to show us that in the trailer. You're, you're, so you're going to tell us Optimus Prime is gone. But by the end of the trailer, it's like, Optimus Prime is back. And oh, look, a hero type movie where one of our main protagonists is being mind controlled of some sort. Wow, haven't seen that before. I was completely underwhelmed by this trailer. Look, it's not a terrible trailer. Let me be clear. It's not a terrible. I'm not sitting here saying, oh, this was a garbage trailer. It was it was little bit less than okay. I'm just so used to Transformers trailers knocking my socks off. It was really cool seeing Josh Duhamel back because I've always liked him in these movies. Uh, I did kind of miss him a little bit in the last one, so it's kind of cool seeing him back. But I don't know. And, and when I got home last night, I was really surprised to see that a lot of you guys online really did like the trailer. A lot of people out there liked the trailer. It worked for a lot of people. That's the beautiful thing about movies, man, is the subjectivity of it. So I'm really happy a lot of you liked it. I was expecting to love it because I always love the Transformers trailers. This one did not work for me. Schnapp, you had a chance to see the trailer. What did you think about it? Well, I watched it, and then with uh, the, like, I was like, "What did I just see?" <laughs> right. And so I, I immediately watched it again, and I was like, "Oh, that's right, it sucks." <laughs> I just had to, I had to double check by watching it in completely a second time because the first time I was like. And you're right. Most of the time, these Transformers trailers, you really get sucked in. I really got sucked into like the Dinobots, the Age of Extinction. This is going to be awesome, and it looked—it just looked like it had all this promise. So, it's weird that I almost am more excited to see the movie now because, to me, the trailer was so underwhelming that maybe this fifth movie is actually going to be awesome. Because, I mean, look—you have Anthony Hopkins just coming off of an incredible spin on Westworld. He's Odin. He's got that voice. Everything he's saying, I'm trying to feel the gravitas, but it's just not there. And it's not accompanied by images. It's just random images of some knights with some flaming arrows. And there's a Nazi swastika. Oh, so we've heard, yeah, there's Nazis in there. Merlin's going to show up. All these things we've heard about. And then all the shots of the robots, nothing was interesting, to me at least. The only thing that was, the only shot that I actually liked was where you saw the moon <clears throat> and that bizarre, weird thing that everyone's saying is Unicron is possibly coming to engulf the moon or something. I was like, that's kind of cool. All the other shots were like straight out of what I've already seen 
from the Transformers films. Here's some explosions. Here's some people running. Here's some other people running. Here's a bunch more explosions. There's a dumb robot. It, all of it just was the same <laughs> thing for me. So honestly, like I really, I did, I did want to enjoy the trailer. I was like, oh, I can't. Finally, you know, there's one shot of some of one of the Transformers with that sword. I don't know which Transformer it is. Uh, I know Megatron is showing back up, but you know, there's all those things where you're like maybe the movie is actually going to be good because the trailer sucked so bad. I mean, hey, look, it's been the opposite so far, right? The yeah. trailers have always been awesome in this point yeah. movies. Maybe this is a good sign. I will look, and a lot of people were talking online. I was wondering too. So like, is that supposed to be Unicron? Like, is that what that's supposed to be? Like, no. really? I will say one of the shots that I did, I thought looked spectacular. The shot I thought looked spectacular was, I believe it was Bumblebee rushing Optimus Prime Prime doing that spin, grabbing him midair, and doing his best like a diesel choke slam. Right. That looked pretty great. I mean, it did. I mean, it didn't help the rest of the trailer. I don't know, Jeremy, you saw it. What did you think? I uh, I like that one part. Twelve hours after the trailer drop, where Ashley Mova said expanding the mythology. I think I think <laughs> no one else will call it mythology. And bless you, Ashley Mova, you're the best. Thanks, um, Riley. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree that like the the pacing of the the beginnings, just like all right, very slow things happening, all right, slow crawl happening, and then metal, 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 and none of it blended together to make actually a cohesive trailer. I was actually intrigued with the Unicron thing. I believe that is supposed to be Unicron, so I find that interesting. I don't know if Optimus Prime is floating in space, and then he becomes the new Galvatron or something like that, because Unicron finds him. I have no idea what they're going for it. Um, but uh, fool me once, uh, shame on you. Fool me five times, shame on me. So <laughs> I, I'm going to be like, yeah, it's going to be garbage, but the review will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Ellis, you saw it. You look giddy as a schoolboy watching that thing. No, sorry, I didn't like it. Uh, I could not stand this trailer. I was very disappointed because it felt generic. It felt like any other Transformers movie. You could have made this trailer with just chopping up scenes from the previous four Transformers movies. There's like one shot of a Nazi flag burning. There's one shot of knights raising their arrows. And the rest of it is just normal Michael Bay Transformers crap where it's slow motion. It's a fight. We don't know whose side anybody is on. I want to get more story out of a Transformers trailer because that's what they're good at when you watch Revenge of the Fallen you feel this ominous presence going on I'm talking about the trailers here when you see the trailer for Dark of the Moon you're like oh it's an exciting new world we're going to be expanding with Age of Extinction we got Dinobots and here it's just an announcement that there's a Transformers movie coming out and that's not what we wanted we wanted to feel like this was different every time the Transformers trailers have been good it's because they sold us a bill of goods that said hey we know the last one was a little light on story or you guys didn't respond to it like we wanted to but now look what we're doing and this one didn't have any of that this one was just like no we're gonna be giving you more of the same so eat it up how much money does anthony hopkins charge to say optimus prime it's got to be at least 250 grand <laughs> i hope so right yeah i'm well, upset i mean here's here's the other thing too it felt to me watching it and i watched it a couple more times and it really stood up more and more it's like Somebody was watching that Logan trailer too much and said, you know what we got to do with our trailer? Like, I'm surprised they didn't have a Johnny Cash song in it. <laughs> like, seriously. Like, it just felt like they were going for that way too much. And, like, you're right. You look at, like, Age of Extinction, right? You get that shot. You get that money shot. Optimus Prime on Grimlock with his mm -hmm. sword out? Are you kidding me? That's guaranteed $150 million opening weekend. Just like that. There was none. There was no shot. There was none of those in this thing. Now... In its defense, in its defense, this is its first trailer. There are more trailers to come. But however, the day before this trailer dropped, they put out that like minute and a half long video announcing the trailer's coming tomorrow, guys showing all the shots from the set and all the things, making a big deal out of we're dropping this epic first trailer. If you're gonna do that, then you have to deliver better than what you did. And, and they didn't, and look, all respect to everybody out there. And there's a lot of people out there who I thought you guys, more of you would have liked it too, because there's a lot of people out there that really did like the trailer. And that's awesome. That's really cool. I just wish I could have enjoyed it more. I was looking forward to the trailer, but I did. I know, Wendy, you had a chance to see the trailer. What did you think? I honestly, I was so bored by it. And it's something I never thought I would say about a Transformer trailer, because in the past, like, let's just take the last one, Age of Extinction. It's not like a movie I was going to go see, but I was entertained thoroughly by the trailer and it hyped me up. And they did all this like promotion, like you said, for the trailer. And then I watched it with you guys at the theater and I was like, wah, wah, that's it. I was bored. 
And that's that's like I I don't know if you guys saw that behind the scene with Michael Bay where he um, kind of ran around the set on the last day of shooting and there's all all the extras and their battle gear on the field. That was more exciting to me than the trailer we saw last night. Yeah, the the announcement piece that came out the day before about shooting's done. Do, 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 that was more entertaining than the trailer was. You know, marketing wise, it's really fascinating because you have like, oh, uh, you hear about Merlin's going to be in this, and you hear about Nazis are going to be in this. And I'm not saying I want the trailer to show me everything, but where do the Nazis fit in? That would be a good piece to have in the trailer. But instead, it's just robots and robots, and we don't know where the Nazis it, fit it in. It would have been different. This right. was That's why this is the most important trailer. Right. You have to announce that the Transformers: The Last Night is something different than what we've already seen, and instead, it just felt like more of the same crap. I'm really nervous that now uh, originally I thought like the Transformers are going to go back in time and then get Merlin and then fight Nazis and now I feel like they're just going to have some setup with Merlin and the sto the sword must be whatever and then some quick shot of some Nazis mm -hmm. and it's all going to be just like flashbacks and then the yeah. whole movie is going to be in the present tense and we're not doing time travel. All right, well let's do keep in mind here though. We've said it once already before but let's keep it in mind. This was the first trailer. Yeah. This was the first trailer. I'm hoping they just, the, the situation is, just like I said before, I think they got a whiff of that Logan trailer to say, oh, we need to go grim and, grim and dark, and that's what'll make the Transformers right. trailer pop. No, your Transformers trailers have always been awesome. You just needed to fix the movies. You didn't need to fix the trailers. So let's see what they come up with next. <laughs> But there's more Transformers stuff to talk about. <laughs> Ashley, what's next? One of the biggest crowd pleasers in Transformers Age of Extinction was the arrival of the Dinobots and their leader, Grimlock. Sadly, the introduction ended with them walking off into the sunset with the other Dinobots leaving the fans wanting more. As part of Steve Weintraub's extensive set visit coverage for Collider, he learned from producer Lorenzo Di Bonaventura that Grimlock will be making a triumphant return in the last night along with a number of other Dinobots. Speaking about the reveal, Di Bonaventura said, you're going to see Grimlock again. So that to me is one of the characters in the last movie that didn't get enough of screen time. Jeremy, are you excited to hear Grimlock will be featured a lot more in the last night? Me, Grimlock excited. <laughs> yeah, I, I am. I mean, anytime you have Grimlock, I'm, I'm in. I'm curious as to why he wasn't in the trailer at all, if he's going to have all this uh, screen time in here. Again, you know, it being a teaser trailer, hopefully we'll, we'll see more when the movie comes out. But uh, yeah, anytime you can have the Dinobots, it does add something, because everyone wanted the Dinobots. We were so jacked in the trailer uh, on the Super Bowl, showed the Dinobots, and Grimlock tumbles over, and even the grass under him explodes because Michael Bay explodes some grass. And then when you watch <laughs> the movie, he like comes in, he's like, all right. And they walk away, and it doesn't really do anything. I hope it's not like that. I feel like it's going to be like that. I feel like it's going to be another. So you got Grimlock for ten minutes, not five. So I, I do want to see more of the Dinobots. I want to see them be sentient and talk, and not just be dinosaurs and snarl and growl because they do have personalities. Hopefully that comes through. Mark. Yeah, I, I don't see that being a big part of this movie because in Age of Extinction, like Jeremy pointed out, they're on the damn poster. Yeah. They're not that big. I, there was a kid in the theater when we all saw the screening for Age of Extinction, and this kid. He kept leaning over to his mom. They were sitting right in front of him. He's like, I really have to pee. And, and then she's like, do you want to go pee? He's like, I don't want to miss the Dinobot. <laughs> the kid probably has a bladder infection because he waited so long just to see the Dinobots, which is the only reason he wanted to see the movie in the first place. I will say that one of the cool shots of this new trailer, which very much disappointed me, was seeing that like pterodactyl mm -hmm. thing fly. I'm like, if they can do more stuff like that, that's a movie that I want to see because it's something new and different. I just can't. But after seeing this trailer, you would think they would want to lead with one of those feet we're talking about. They haven't done it yet. So I can't get that excited. Schnepp. You know, it's exciting to me to know that the Dinobots are in it because they're not in the trailer. And they were like, the, for the, whatever, 38 seconds that they were in the, <laughs> the two, two hour and 45 minute fourth film. Um, I'm looking forward to it. And especially that one dinosaur, it's got three heads. Yeah. It looks like a robotic version of Ghidra. So I'm 100% <laughs> in. If that thing can spit electricity, I might love this movie. I am so impressed with your ability to drink Kool-Aid for this reason. Hey, for this reason, because because you're, you're actually not drinking Kool-Aid because everybody else told you it tastes like pee. Right. And then you're like, you know what? By the time the movie comes out, it's going to be delicious Kool-Aid. Dude, this is a shot of Pickleback. That's what this is. So look it up. Find out what I'm talking about. Pickleback, son. Get on it. I, I look bringing the Dinobots back, I think, was a no-brainer. But they have to use them better. It's going to be pointless if you just bring them back and use them the same way you did last time. Look, you don't need to use 
cartoon characters in a quote unquote live action motion picture the same way they were used in the cartoon. We, I don't have to see Grimlock going, me Grimlock. I don't have to see him <laughs> saying that, but I do want to see him. He's not a mindless animal. He's a super advanced piece of technology. <laughs> that, that, this is one thing I always did bother me. Wait a minute. So Bumblebee is this sentient robot that can shoot missiles from his arms, but his voice box isn't working? And you can't fix that? <laughs> really? Um, so I, I don't need the same Grimlock from the cartoon, although that would be cool if they did, but he's gotta be more than just Optimus Prime's noble steed. I mean, right. he's just gotta be more than that. All right, what's next? While visiting the set of Transformers the last night, Collider Steve Weintraub asked about the status of the standalone Bumblebee movie and learned an interesting bit of information about the project. There exists an R-rated idea for it that will in all <laughs> likelihood never see the light of day. Michael Bay talked a bit about the movie, saying the writer's room turned out a fun and very Tarantino-esque movie with Bumblebee, but because Hasbro would never in their right mind sign off on an R-rated franchise film, the idea won't go much further than the writer's room. Mark now that you know that there's an R-rated Bumblebee movie, do you think it could work like Logan or Deadpool? I really do, Ashley. This is the thing <laughs> that's going to turn the course of the Transformers franchise is an R-rated Bumblebee movie. Look, I did a piece about this on Collider News yesterday, and uh, I just don't see the reason to have a Bumblebee who is maybe one of the most beloved by children Transformers to make that R-rated because he's a car and the way he communicates is through the radio. Is he just going to be listening to like Howard Stern? They were like Playboy Radio the whole time. Like it's just a bunch of f bombs that he's dropping. You don't need the language to make it R rated in a Bumblebee movie. You have so much crazy cartoon violence that it's not going to be considered realistic enough to necessitate an R rating. And unless there's just a bunch of teenagers making out in the back seat, or Cameron Diaz pulls a the counselor and has her way with the windshield of the car, you don't need this thing to be rated R. So it's just a ridiculous concept to me. Yeah, uh, this just in: Disney considering a Tinkerbell movie where she's addicted to heroin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be huge with the kids. What was the logic behind this? Like, of any of the Transformers movies, you first of all, you can't do that with any of the Transformers. No. If you do, maybe you do it with Soundwave. Maybe you do it with Grimlock, maybe, if you right. want to go that. But you pick the most child-friendly of the Autobots, Bumblebee, and say, hey, let's let's pursue an idea here with this in the writer's room. I don't understand that logic. It was completely stupid, Jeremy. Yeah, I mean, if, if, you've ever, if you've ever seen an episode of Entourage, you know the first question any executive asks is, how can we market it? And marketing-wise, I mean, taking <laughs> the child-friendly Bumblebee, making him our writing, to a car that has no voice box and can't... I mean, I always thought the Bumblebee standalone movie was absurd enough because he can't talk. I am a little let down and disappointed that we can't get a bunch of NWA tracks playing for the entire commentary <laughs> of this movie, but I just, I have no, I feel like it was someone said it jokingly, and then someone took it a little more seriously than they should have for about a day, and now it's like a real thing that could have happened, but I don't think this was actually ever actually going to get off the ground. It couldn't possibly, could no, it? No, it sounds like, I mean, it was probably a joke where they're like, yeah, it's going to hang out with Little Red Corvette, and we'll have the, that song play, and then somebody's like, get out, you're fired. <laughs> and then that piece of paper, whatever he drew it on, like scrawled it on, fell into the garbage, and someone found it. It's like, I got the notes from the Transformers meetings, and they saw that. <laughs> Bumblebee, spelled wrong, R rating, Little Red Corvette. Look! I don't believe this at all. <laughs> the notes are like, it was going to be very Tarantino-esque. It's like, that. just hearing that is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, the Bumblebee and Tarantino-esque are like, uh, it's an oxymoron. Yeah, so. it's, it, you know what, though? It does bring up a great conversation with John's movie as far as Tinkerbell being addicted to heroin. I would love to see that movie. Just, <laughs> Peter, I just, I just need happy thoughts. <laughs> oh, oh, I need to go to my oh. happy place. Then she goes and hangs out with Pinocchio. Yeah, <laughs> that idea. All right, guys. We've reached out part of the to talk about what is opening this week, brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. We're getting into the festive spirit Ashley, what's the first movie we're talking about? It's Office Christmas Party. When the CEO, Jennifer Aniston, tries to close her hard-partying brothers, T.J. Miller's branch, he and his chief technical officer, Jason Bateman, must rally their co-workers and host an epic office Christmas party in an effort to impress a potential client and close a sale that will save their jobs. Uh, look, this is one that I have felt torn about. Now, a couple people in the office have seen it. I'm supposed to go see it tonight. Uh, so I haven't seen it yet. One of the trailers kind of bored me. Maybe saying that this is going to be cheesy. One of the trailers wasn't fantastic, but pretty funny. 
And so I'm not sure which way I'm going in this. Look, I love T.J. Miller. I love Jason Bateman. So to see this, I, I really like the directors involved here. It's the same directors who did that other one with Jennifer Aniston and Jason Bateman. The Switch, uh, which the was Switch. criminally underrated. So, I mean, I think that's very interesting all at the same time. So, I'm interested in the film. I'm not going to say I'm jumping up and down a bit, but I am interested in it. Jeremy, what about you? Yeah, a good, uh, a good Christmas comedy. I'm always going to be there. The first tra the trailer that I saw, I was in the theater. This trailer's going, and it literally cuts off and says, Office Christmas Party. I was like, that, that was the most jarring ending to any trailer I had ever <laughs> seen. So, that one kind of killed me on it. But then I saw another trailer that, that was edited properly. I guess they, they had the time to actually edit it. And I, I want to say it. I mean, and uh, it, it could. This is a coin flip movie. You know, it's just like right. heads it's good, tails it's not. Um, but I'll always hope for a Christmas comedy to be good. So, I have to say I'm looking forward to it. I am. Schnepp. Uh, I've actually thrown parties like this in Chicago nice. with things ending up on the train tracks. And so, I, <laughs> like, seeing this gave me a horrible flashback and also, like, kind of like, I want to see this movie. <laughs> and that's how I would, I would sell it. Like, look, if you want to go see a movie called Office Christmas Party, then you know what you're, you're going to pay for a two-hour crazy, insane office Christmas party where everything goes wrong. That should, like, exactly what the trailer is telling you. It's not going to win Oscars. It's, it's basically like, do you want to have fun? for two hours and watch a bunch of weird stuff happen on a, at a Christmas party. That's kind of, I saw that trailer, I was like, I'm not expecting it to be La La Land or Nocturnal right. Animals or Manchester at the sea. It's, 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 it's called Office Christmas Party. So I mean, <laughs> literally my expectations are at a two out of 10, I'm still gonna see it. Right? Yeah, that's a great call because like, whereas we didn't like the previous Transformers movies, right. most of us, so we needed that trailer to win us over here. You don't need to see a trailer because like what Schnepp said, you see the title Office Christmas Party, you already know what the movie is. You know it's going to be a raunchy comedy. If you want to investigate more, you can just look at the cast involved and say, wow, that's a lot of different types of people. They're hitting a lot of different demographics as far as comedic values go. Mm -hmm. And I think I want to see this movie or I have no interest in it. You don't need to see a trailer for this movie. However, I did, and I wasn't impressed. Like, I thought the trailers would be hilarious, and they just weren't. But sometimes with comedies, the trailers can be awful, and the movie's hilarious. Other times, they throw everything that is funny in the movie in the trailer. So it really is a, it's a coin flip. Yeah. I'm going with the, I'm going to go positive, because I like a lot of people involved, and I want to see this movie. And as it happens, I will get to see the movie tonight. So I'm cautiously optimistic. Mm. All right, guys, we reached that part of the show for Buy or Sell. Here's how this works. In front of her, Ashley's got a few other items in the world of movie news she's going to run them down then those of us at the table are simply going to say whether we buy it or sell it so Ashley what do we got according to a report from Slash Film who have learned from multiple sources a seven minute prologue for Christopher Nolan's new film Dunkirk will play in front of 15 select IMAX 70 millimeter showings of Rogue One a Star Wars story Nolan shot large sequences for Dunkirk and in the past has debuted the IMAX prologues of The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises months before their initial release We'll be able to see if this is true when Rogue One hits theaters and IMAX screens on December 16th. Schnett Byer sells seeing seven minutes of IMAX footage from Dunkirk before Rogue One. Uh, that's a big buy for me. I mean, I'm very excited to see the entire movie. So if I only get to see seven delicious minutes of it, then I know that Christopher Nolan has selected the seven minutes well. So it's, it's going to get us really hyped to see the film. I'm hoping that they show the seven minutes and then maybe like two other trailers and something else and don't just go right into Rogue One because you're going to probably need a minute to just be like chill out for a second like from whatever we're going to see. So, but I, I'm very excited about it. Jeremy. Yeah, I can promise you it's going to be right into Rogue One. It's going to be trailers, oh. seven minutes, Rogue One. But, uh, but I mean, yeah, this is notorious Nolan right here. But every time Christopher Nolan has shown seven minutes of his film coming up, I always walk out of there be, having that be the thing that I am thinking about for the next week. It's mm. just, it's really cool to see a trailer it's cool to see something about a movie that's not out yet. It's cool to see a clip of a movie that's not out yet directed by Christopher Nolan. So if I can munch on that candy, I'm going to munch on that candy. So yeah, I mean, and then you get Rogue One going into it. It's kind of like when he had Dark Knight Rises and it was right before Mission Impossible uh, Ghost Protocol, I believe right. it was. And right there, you're like, that was just seven extra minutes of awesome that I had on top of the awesome movie. So yeah, I'm buying that for sure. You know, it's nice that I have to go to the theater to see Rogue One, but I can get there two and a half minutes later because I don't need to see the Transformers trailer ever again. <laughs> but now I need to get there early to see this if I am around one of the lucky theaters that gets to see this IMAX footage because I think it will play right before Rogue One, and that makes so much sense because Rogue One is a war movie. This is a war movie. This is setting us up for ominous battle tones. That's what you're going to get with Rogue One. I love this marriage idea. It makes so much sense to me. I'm super excited for Dunkirk. I just hope that the 
seven minutes of IMAX footage they show us is in a slow motion on the one awful extra that's in that scene <laughs> that still takes me out of the trailer every time I see it. Uh, just, and just to be clear, from what we understand, this isn't, because there are hundreds of IMAX screens, this is not going to be on every IMAX screen. From what we understand, and we're going to try to clarify this information a little bit later, it will be on 15 15 select IMAX screens that are 70 millimeter IMAX screens. So there's even fewer of those around. Probably the AMC in, uh, at uh, Universal City Walk will be <laughs> yes, one of them. definitely. Here, but so keep your eyes open. Once we know about more and, and you know which movies are coming out, and we have dogs running in. Every, we have dogs, you, you can't see it. Dogs. We look, there's four dogs, dogs everywhere. Dogs. There's literally four dogs running all over the place. Wendy is now oh, flailing her like a There he, oh, there, there, <laughs> there he goes. Oh there's two of the same kind. It's a dog and oh, no, no, he's coming back for Jerry. I am if literally get, turning around. It's dog dogs and less <laughs> mice <laughs> is a good day at the office. You want to die from cuteness? Oh my wheels? Okay, I bring him on up. There we go. There's danger. And Gypsy is uh, Gypsy is, is, is twin down there. Oh, here, here and Gypsy's right there. <laughs> now you yeah, guys are, our show's been been hijacked for a few minutes. Right? <laughs> that was not a dog. That was a cable. You're gonna cable. think it's that the same dog, dog, but it's a different and dog. Then, I'll uh, be right Falcor, back. Found yeah, He's gonna take his dogs out there for now. Okay, so once again, <laughs> once again, sidetracked a little bit. Isn't it nice that Jeremy's dogs and I go to the same barber? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that nice? I see a chat room. What's up? Ah. Uh, uh, so once again, once we find out which those theaters will be, we will absolutely let you guys know. And obviously, this is a terrific idea. I buy it. All right, what's next? According to a report from THR, the teaser for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is the biggest teaser trailer debut in Marvel Studios theatrical history and Marvel's second most viewed trailer after Captain America's Civil War. The teaser, which debuted at Brazil Comic Con and then online, was viewed 81 million times online in under 24 hours. Ooh. That number is 30 million times higher than the first teaser. John, with <laughs> Guardians Volume 2 being the biggest teaser in Marvel history, do you buy or sell the movie becoming a top five all-time release for the studio? Oh, wow. I mean, the thing is, Marvel has some big, big numbers. But look, here's what Guardians has going. It has two major things going for it. Actually, three. Major thing going for it, number one, it is a Marvel film. Major thing, number two going for it, Chris Pratt is now a bigger star than he was when the first Guardians came out. Major thing going for it, number three, everyone loved the first Guardians of the Galaxy. You put all of that together, I'm gonna go buy. I do think, it's not gonna become his number one film, no, but I do think cracking its top five domestic box office, even worldwide box office, I think is really within the realm of possibility. More so, I think it's a probability, so I'm gonna say buy. Mark, what do you think? I think it's a definite buy to be a top five, especially when you look at the opening weekend numbers, because the biggest opening in Marvel history opening weekend was the Avengers, which went over $200 million domestically. I don't know that it can get to those lofty Beauty and the Beast type numbers, but <laughs> I think that it's got a shot because it's number five movie is something, I think it's Iron Man 2, which was only like $128 million. Right. So I think it's definitely going to eclipse that. I would look at Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. If the marketing campaign continues to excite people the way it has already, it's got a sweet summer landing spot. I think it can do $180 million opening weekend. Jeremy. Well, I'm back uh, after dog control. Hearing Mark Ellis's comment about the hair, I got one word, Mark. Floby, get on that baby! <laughs> it's the best. But uh, yeah, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. It was a good, it was a good trailer. It was a good movie. It was a surprisingly good movie. You yeah. know, like when a movie's good, that's great. When it surprises you, you gotta see it again just to see if you're going out of your mind, or maybe you just like, hey, I love a good surprise. Let's do it. I think this movie does have the potential to go in the top five for sure for Marvel. Um, because, I mean, as far as trailers go, this was the polar opposite of the Transformers trailer. This yeah. was a trailer that in and of itself is just funny. It's just good to watch. It's great. You love the banter. It's like two minutes in and out. You just had a good time. If the movie itself can keep that up, absolutely. Schnapp. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, this teaser trailer was so enjoyable to watch. That's why it's got the big numbers that it's got. And it's a sequel to what would be Marvel Star Wars. I mean, Guardians right. of the Galaxy is the cosmic version of all these superhero films, and it's a beloved, I mean, everyone wants to, every, I don't know anyone who didn't like Guardians of the Galaxy and can't wait to see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and that this teaser trailer has all of those elements of those characters, just a little bit more, a little bit more Drax. Oh, there's Baby Groot, just all of these elements that I cannot wait to see this. I'm, I'm banking on it easily 
going into the top five. So yes, I think it's going to be one of the biggest box office numbers for Marvel. It could be top three. And it's actually a very similar situation where they had this year with Civil War because Civil War kicked off the summer in earnest in May, and that's what Marvel could put all their marketing dollars behind in the months leading up to it. Once you get into the summer, they're going to have other movies, and Disney has other properties they're going to concern themselves with, but that big summer push is all about May 5th when Guardians opens up against virtually nothing big in the competitive movie industry, so I think it's it's prime for a big release. Yeah, it's like with uh, the the first Avengers breaking two hundred million, it's like mm-hmm. that's the first time we saw those guys on screen. Right. The only yeah. the thing that I can think of that can compete <laughs> with that is that niche comedy galactic. You know, like it's a crew of scoundrels, and for some odd reason, mm-hmm. that's niche enough, and people love that enough to where that could be the competitive edge for uh, the Avengers. Not top in the Avengers, but still. All right, guys, well, we do the show live every day, and as such, we like to save a little bit of time at the end of the show to take some of your live t- questions via Twitter. How do you get a question on Simple? Just make sure you're following us on Twitter, at Collider Video, tweet on in your questions, and Wendy will pick a couple out to select at the end of the show. Now, I want to remind you that Movie Talk is not the only show on today. A little bit later, that gentleman over there, John Schnepp and his show Heroes, <laughs> will be airing around 6 p.m.-ish. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Keep your eyes open for that. I also want to remind you that our brand new Crash Course video on what are kyber crystals in the Star Wars universe because they're going to play a big important role in Rogue One. What are those things? The newest Crash Course went up yesterday. Keep your eyes open for that. Also, a new Schmodown goes up today. Ashley V. Robinson versus Mike. I'm not even going to try to say his last name. Kalinowski. Mike Kalinowski. Those guys, that goes up around 2 p.m. today. Make sure you guys keep your eyes open for that. And also, a brand new, we did a reaction video for that Transformers trailer. Keep your eye open for that. That will drop in just a little while. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get to mailbag. Listen, guys, if you've got a topic or a question you'd like us to address on the show, just email us anytime at collidervideo at gmail.com. Ashley, what's in the mailbag? Derek writes, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I love all of your shows. Do you think Fox will use the New Mutants movie to help reboot the X-Men timeline once and for all? Magic has the ability to teleport and travel through different timelines, so I was thinking they could use the New Mutants to go and save the original X-Men team and bring everybody into the same timeline timeline. It's just an idea since they are going to possibly reboot the main X-Men franchise if Jennifer Lawrence, Michael Fassbender, and James McAvoy don't return. Nope. Nope. I, like, <laughs> yeah. we, we've talked about this before and it's totally true. When you walk into the fabled halls of Fox Studios in granite, up on the wall, chiseled in Roman style lettering is continuity, schmontinuity. They don't care. <laughs> they had their opportunity to reset the timeline with X-Men Days of Future Past. And say, okay, all the continuity, and we all thought, look, Fox knows they have a problem with continuity. There is no continuity with any of their movies. They know that. And we all thought when we saw X-Men Days of Future Past, still my all-time favorite X-Men movie, that, okay, now this is their way to reset everything and start continuity again. And then what did they do with their very next movie? Wait, Angel is that guy? And wait... Wait, wait a minute, You're t- why is Nightcrawler there at this point in time? And like, it, they just went all out again. Logan, we've already heard from the filmmakers that Logan is not going to stick within even the new continuity. So they don't care about continuity, they never will. And to some point, I don't mind that all that much. Like if you have to break continuity to give us X-Men Days of Future Past, then do it. If you have to break continuity within this X universe to give us Deadpool, then give us Deadpool. Look, I love Marvel that they're keeping everything in continuity, but if Fox just wants to give a great one-shot Deadpool movie, followed up by another great one-shot Deadpool movie that doesn't necessarily follow the continuity of the first, I'm okay with that if you just give us a great movie. Shtep, there's a lot of different ways to do these things. How do you think they're going to approach this? Uh, I certainly hope they... Uh, they don't keep rebooting and rebooting and yeah, rebooting yeah. or use the character magic to magically grab X-23 from the Logan movie. We were joking about it. Yeah. We're like, ah, at the end, that would be kind of cool. But once again, joking about it. We don't really <laughs> want to see that. It's a joke. Uh, I, would, I would love for them to take these things seriously. And like, I think what uh, it seems like what they're trying to do is, uh, is take it a little bit serious with Deadpool and saying, look, we are going to do a straight up reboot of the X-Men series, or I, I don't know how you would uh, call it. I don't know if it would be a reboot with a new Wolverine, so to speak, but mm. I would like to see those characters from X-Men Apocalypse, like Jean Grey and Cyclops, those younger characters move forward. I just don't know if they're gonna do that. 
But uh, yeah, I don't see magic doing any of this Doctor Strange, like time travel kind of flashpoint flash stuff. It's just not gonna happen. They're the new mutants. You gotta, you gotta introduce those characters and get to know them before you start manipulating timelines. Jeremy. Yeah, they've already done the time thing once. I don't think they're gonna do it again. It's really an interesting thing that they did. It's like at a point they all sat around, they're like, okay, we have a problem with continuity. And then they did the X-Men first class and like, maybe that'll fix it. And they were like, look, we have a problem with continuity. <laughs> and they were like, Let's just own it, you know? Let's just go forth and just own it. It's like Tyrion Lannister said, wear it like armor, it can never be used against you, and people just roll with it. People watch the mm -hmm. X-Men movies, and their gripe, if there is a gripe, they're like, oh, it's out of continuity. Did you like it? Yeah, I did. You know, so like no one really, it's never the problem with an X-Men movie that you watch. It's a thing that might be in the back of your mind, but it never compromises the experience. If there's something that's gonna compromise the experience, it's something else. I mean, they owned it, they ran with it. I don't think they're gonna reboot it in any way. Uh, like, they're not gonna bring the continuity back around. If they're gonna do it, they're just gonna do another hard reboot. And they're like, look, it's, it's a new thing. There isn't a story-based reason as to why it's a new thing, but it's a new thing. But I'm I just, Props to them for actually owning their thing. Mark? I think right under the continuity, schmontinuity thing at X-Men is that uh, we need Wolverine in every movie. But <laughs> you're not getting that anymore, so I think that it is a prime opportunity to do something different and experiment a little bit, particularly because who is the new favorite character in the X-Men universe right now on the big screen? It's Deadpool. What is Deadpool great at? Breaking the fourth wall, making fun of... He will make fun of continuity in the X-Men movies, regardless of what course they want to take. So if they want to explore what they have with the new younger cast from Apocalypse and see how that goes going forward. I can see a place down the road where you would want to incorporate the new mutants because you basically get a free movie out of it, whereas most movie franchises have to just stop. Like Amazing Spider-Man 2, they didn't have some weird <laughs> timeline count start at the end of that movie. They were trying to set up more movies and they just never made them. That's usually the way franchises end. It's not with a, a huge, you know, oh, we're going out on a grand scale. It's usually not Return of the Jedi. It's just a thud. Then they try to sheepishly move on. But with New Mutants, you do have an opportunity to reboot everything. I don't see it happening yet, but way down the road, there's a chance. You know, there, well, I think my favorite joke, I don't know, there's a lot of favorite jokes. So one of my favorite Deadpool. jokes in Deadpool, going to your point about making fun of is when... Um, Colossus says to him, I'm going to take him to see the professor. Yeah. Which one, McAvoy or Stewart? Right. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I just yeah. multiple yeah. timelines are confusing. Yeah, <laughs> I just cracked up. All right, guys. Hey, listen, you know what? I want to make sure we have a good amount of time to take your live Twitter questions. So we're going to jump over the final mailbag question and go right to Twitter. So guys, make sure you're firing in your questions. Wendy, what have you picked out today? All right, first one comes from... Trevor Volantine, who writes, Thor Ragnarok and Justice League are both scheduled for November 2017. Which one are you more excited about? Wow. Uh, I'll be honest, I didn't realize, they were, are they both scheduled yeah, for the same I day? Mm -hmm. I, thought, I thought Justice League was August, but then they moved it to November, yeah, so. Not the same day, it's the same month. Okay, well, okay, so let me, I'll look into whether it's the exact same day. So let's move beyond the question of the exact same day. Say, am I looking more forward to Ragnarok or Justice League? Wow, you gotta understand, Thor, the first Thor movie I thought was brilliant. Second one, not so much. But the first one I thought was, I think it's very, I think it's underappreciated too. That first one, what he did with that movie, uh, what uh, Kenneth Branagh did with that film, I think was fabulous. Mm -hmm. I'm really, especially knowing that we're gonna get Hulk in there, we're gonna get a little bit of, of that World War Hulk flavor or uh, Planet Hulk yeah. flavor in it a little bit, Gladiator Hulk, I mean, that's all really exciting. But it's the Justice League. All right. Damn it. Um, this is a great would you rather segment. All Ooh, right. I know. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm I'm you know what? I'm gonna lean towards Justice League. I, I think I'm gonna say now, don't ask me which one I think is gonna be the better movie, but which one would I be looking forward to more? I'm gonna say I gotta look forward to the Justice League movie a little bit more. Jeremy, what about you? Yeah, it's it's a case of uh, what am I looking forward to for entertainment and what am I looking forward to because I'm curious as to what it does for the rest of that franchise. Yeah. I there's more writing on Justice League than there is Thor Ragnarok. If so Thor, much more. Yeah, if Thor Ragnarok is gonna like, eh, they're like, it's fine. We have 20 other films out there that people love. It's no big deal. Oh, I guess this is the last standalone Thor movie we get, but you know what? He'll be back in Infinity Wars, so it'll be fine. Um, but I'm with you on this. I think Thor Ragnarok is going to be a great time because you get Thor, you got the Hulk, and they're doing the thing. Uh, they could go a Planet Hulk direction. We don't know. But Justice League has so much more on its shoulders, and I'm going in there. It's that intensity where I'm sweating. I'm like, oh, God, be good. So for that, I have to go with this. I'm just more interested in it. Snap. Boy, that's a tough – it's a super tough one because – 
I guess I could, you know, I could say if Wonder Woman is great, then I'm going to be more excited right. to see what they do with Justice League. And I know that they've internally changed whatever Justice League was going to be before uh, they re rewrote the entire thing and redid. You know, they had the same. You're going to wear the same costumes, but everything else is different. <laughs> Here's the set that is exactly the same, but now everything you're saying is completely different. With that, I feel like I feel like uh, Justice League is going to be a really fun film. But I'm going to go with Thor Ragnarok because. I have had so much fun with all of these characters in the Marvel universe to to have the chance to see what they're going to do with Hela and Surtur and all these characters that I read about as, you know, from the Walt Simonson run and from the Stanley Jack Kirby run in the comics to see that come to life is a little bit different for me because Justice League has already had a lot of fun with the Justice League animated and Justice yeah. League Unlimited. Those, if you haven't seen those cartoons, that is that's already been realized so well. Thor, on the other hand, and a lot of his characters have not. So to me, I, I really want to see Thor Ragnarok a little bit more in my interest. But once again, it could change if Wonder Woman is just knocks it oh, out yeah, of the park. Could, yeah, that yeah, that changes things. Then a it lot. could change it, and if another trailer drops, like I, we haven't seen anything. I saw some Thor Ragnarok stuff at uh, at San Diego Comic Con, which blew me away. So. The Just League trailer, also really incredible. So it's a, just by a hair for Thor. I mean, look, the bottom line here is that I'm going to be gaining a lot of popcorn and nacho weight in November <laughs> because I think Thor Ragnarok comes out November 3rd, I yep. want to say, and then two weeks later is when you get Justice League. If I had to pick one, it is a very difficult decision, but I'm going to go with the one that makes me no more nervous. As a sports fan, I feel like there's more at stake in seeing Justice League. I would feel like Thor Ragnarok is a really fun hockey game where I don't care that much about the team I'm watching. I'm just there to see a lot of fun and a good fight. And if that game doesn't work out, it's going to be okay because we have the Infinity War movies coming right after it. But if Justice League does, I'm going to be watch I'm going to be pacing in the theater back and forth, just like a nervous. <laughs> I'm going to look like Belichick with like a cutoff sweatshirt. And just like a play sheet, and like, come on, Ben, stick to the damn plan. Come on, Zach, don't do that again. I'm going to be rooting for this movie more so than I'm rooting for Thor Ragnarok. So Justice League is the pick, but ever so slightly. And a lot of the reason why it's that close is because of the footage we saw of Thor Ragnarok at Comic-Con. It was pretty sweet. All, All right, right what's next?